Do you pay attention to the Backblaze hard drive reliability stats? Well, you shouldn't. Welcome to Gadget Blues. This is KC, and today we are talking about Backblaze's regular releases of hard drive reliability data and why it's BS. Every year, Backblaze releases a bunch of data on hard drive reliability within their data center. Actually, they release this on a quarterly basis, but it gets reported most often with the annual releases. And I'm really surprised at the breadth to which this information travels. It doesn't just get discussed on sites like Storage Review and Serve the Home and so forth. It goes all the way to more public venues like Reddit and so forth. And a lot of folks seem to base their hard drive buying decisions on this data. I think that the data is not a good way to make purchasing decisions. And I'll tell you why. First off, a little background on Backblaze. They are a cloud backup provider for both individuals and businesses, and they have been somewhat shaking up the industry over the past few years in their democratization of storage by reducing the cost and doing some open source designs of data center hardware and so forth in order to fit the most cheap data into the smallest space at the lowest cost possible. If they were an airline, they would be Ryanair. If they were a package delivery service, they would be FedEx Home Delivery. If they were a cab company, they would be Uber. I think Uber is probably the best analogy because with Uber, you have someone driving an ordinary car, not a cab. They are not a professional. They pick you up in their regular car and get you to your destination. And that is Shaken up the cab industry, which is a good thing in the long run, but it also has some challenges in that those folks are not the professionals that you're used to in the cab industry. Now, I'm not dissing Backblaze as a company. I admire what they've done in innovation, both in engineering and in innovative thinking to bring the price of cloud storage down. I would just say one thing about dealing with them as a cloud storage provider is your philosophy should always be would I use the same sort of hardware as my cloud provider does in my own data center if I had one? And make your decisions based on that. But we aren't really here to talk about Backblaze as a cloud storage provider. We're here to talk about their hard drive reliability data. If we look at their hard drive reliability data, the latest annual report is 2016. We can see on their website that they have this big table of hard drive makes and models and drive failures and so forth. The first thing I noticed on this data is that the table on the website happens to be a JPEG, even though HTML handles data tables just fine. Now, there could be a perfectly innocent explanation for this, that the person doing the website doesn't understand HTML tables. But a cynical person might say that this is a JPEG because it makes it difficult for a casual user to grab the hard drive model numbers and pop them into a search engine to figure out what class of drive they are. Backblaze is completely open with all of this data. They give you a zip file of an XLS to download, but that is extra effort. Most people are just going to go to this page, read the data, and draw their conclusions for drive purchasing advice. The part of this data that really sticks in my craw is the hard drive failure rates by manufacturer. A lot of people will look at this, see these failure rates, and say, oh, I'm going to buy a Toshiba over a Western Digital or something like that. And that's BS. And I'll get into that in just a second. But first, let me touch briefly on what the classes of hard drives are in the marketplace. Here's a quick overview of the classes of hard drives available. This excludes surveillance because I just don't want to get into that. So we've got desktop, which has low warranty. It's made for a single user. It's got unrated mean time between failure and very low rating for terabytes written per year. It's also not even rated for 24 by seven operation. This should never be used in a data center sort of environment. Then we have NAS one to eight bay. This has a slightly longer warranty versus the two year typical of the 5400 RPM desktop. It is optimized for software RAID, has a better MTBF and is rated for 24 by seven a higher terabytes per year rating, and 
it doesn't have vibration tolerance. I'll get into that more in a minute. Then we have NAS in up to 16 bays. Those have a five-year warranty. And you notice the non-recoverable error rate is half that of the one to eight bay versions. It's also rated for almost twice the number of terabytes per year operation. Then at the pinnacle, we have Enterprise with the five-year warranty, optimized for hardware RAID. It has vibration tolerance and 2.5 million hour MTBF, unlimited terabytes written per year. Enterprise drives also have optional full disk encryption or SED available models. Full disk encryption is great if you're going through a bunch of drives because on drive disposal, you don't have to do anything to decommission the drive. It's always encrypted, so you can just pull it out of the unit and the encryption key is on the RAID controller, so it doesn't go with the drive if you need to dispose it. It fails in any way, shape, or form. You don't have to do anything with it. So it makes data center operation a lot easier when decommissioning. A lot of people on the forums will tell you that all of these drives are the same and these classifications are merely marketing. That is definitely not true. And we will see that proved by the Backblaze data in just a second. A lot of this myth of the drives being the same between desktop and enterprise came back in 2009-ish with these Western Digital one terabytes where you could run a utility to turn on time-limited error recovery and make these essentially the same as the server drive and they had a long warranty and so forth. So people started getting into that mindset. That's definitely not the case today. One great illustration of this is the vibration tolerance on greater than eight bays. There's this terrific video from years ago, which I'll show up here, that has this guy screaming into a drive array in a data center while monitoring the seek latency and the drives go all crazy when he yells at them. That's a terrific illustration of how important it is to prevent vibration from messing with your seeks on the drive. So here's the table I drew up of the Backblaze 2016 data adding these color classifications of the drive type. The ones marked in green are enterprise, which are appropriate for their data center environment. The ones marked in yellow are drives that are rated 24 by seven for surveillance or NAS, but they are not vibration tolerant and are not meant for use in data centers. And then the red are the desktop drives, which should never be used in this type of application. In my opinion, Backblaze should have disclosed these categories in their data up front because this is all about horses for courses, having the right drive for the right application. And here's where it all bears out. Using the appropriate enterprise drives in their data center, they're seeing a failure rate of only 0.23% annualized. The rated annualized failure rate or AFR from the enterprise drive manufacturers is 0.35%. So they're actually running lower than that predicted by the drive manufacturers for enterprise drives. That's great. For the inappropriate NAS and surveillance type drives, it goes up to 2.63%. And for the completely inappropriate desktop drives, up to 3.33%. So if we boil that down to just all of the appropriate drives and all of the inappropriate drives, we see 0.23% versus 3.06%. That's actually 14 times the failure rate for the inappropriate drives. 14 times the failure rate. Let that sink in for a second. To better illustrate this, the total number of drive failures that Backblaze experienced in 2016 was 1,225 failures or 3.36 per day. If they had used all enterprise class drives, they would have experienced only 163 drive failures in 2016. I mentioned that Backblaze had open source their storage pod design, and there are a couple of major manufacturers for those. The one that's probably best known is 45drives.com, which is not affiliated with Backblaze, but they were their primary supplier of storage pods up through the version 4.0 pod. And ironically, on 45drives.com's FAQ about what hard drive should I use, they point out the difference between enterprise and consumer class drives, noting consumer drives can and will get the job done, but will fail more often than enterprise drives and cause unnecessary server downtime slash extra work. 
using enterprise drives in your Storinator allows it to just work all day and all year long. The whole point of Backblaze business model, of course, is to get the most storage for the lowest cost. And that's all a big equation of the hard drive cost and the pod cost and what they're charging end users and what it costs to replace failed units and so on and so forth. We don't have any fully burdened cost data from Backblaze on what it costs them to replace a failed drive. There's always a chance of data loss no matter how secure you think your RAID array is. All of that adds up to pain for failing drives. You really don't want to have drives failing. There's a hidden cost in there, not just in dollars, but in hassle, both for you and your users. And that can add up. That has to be factored in. We don't have all this cost analysis from Backblaze on, is it actually cheaper to have a bunch of inappropriate drives that fail all the time or to pay more for enterprise drives? They haven't addressed that question. They're just throwing this data out and, in my opinion, inappropriately saying that one manufacturer has a higher failure rate than another, where really it is all of the manufacturers that are supplying enterprise drives have a low failure rate and all the manufacturers that supply desktop drives or inappropriate drives have a higher failure rate. So congratulations, Backblaze. You have proved that using appropriate drives is more reliable than using inappropriate drives. Slow clap. But Backblaze has also proven that this myth of all drives being the same except for marketing purposes is incorrect also because if they were all the same, then the failure rate would be about the same by drive class. It's not. It's 14 times lower failure rate on the appropriate drives. So at this point, you're saying, hey, KC, if I can't use the Backblaze data to choose a hard drive model or manufacturer, what should I do to choose a hard drive? So to choose a drive, A, pick a drive that's appropriate for your usage case. NAS for NAS, enterprise for enterprise, surveillance for surveillance. B, assume it's always gonna fail. C, backup using the 3-2-1 strategy. Google that if you don't know what that is. And you might wanna make your pricing decision based on the drive price per year of warranty. Price per year of warranty is a really good metric for choosing a drive because if you decide, hey, I want a six terabyte that is designed for NASs of one to eight bays, you will have a choice of three year or five year warranty. Now you might get something thrown in with a five year warranty like 7,200 RPM or something like that. So take that into account as well, but do the math on price per year of warranty because you can assume they're going to fail. After you go out of warranty, you aren't gonna get a replacement for free. Sometimes you may see an inappropriate drive that's so much cheaper than the appropriate drive, you could say, hey, I'll buy extras and have them on hand as replacements. But bear in mind that pain of rebuilding the array, the chance of data loss, the hassle that you have to go through when your system is down or slow during that process, and the chance of a second drive failing within that window. That's why I recommend that previously mentioned 3 2, one backup strategy using RAID 6 on the primary array if you care about uptime and that possibility of two drive failure, especially if you're buying the drives together in a batch, all with its same date stamp, you may have two fail at about the same time. Often when building a system, I will stagger my drive orders from different vendors to try to get ones from different batches so they don't have the chance of failing at the same time. Anyway, enough trivia about that. I hope you enjoyed this look at uh, Backblaze failure data and how you should really choose what drives to buy, not based on that Backblaze table. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment, and we will see you in the next Gadget Blues.